Uh, so I'm delighted to have with me today, Jason Tebb, who is um, on the market's chief executive. Jason, thanks so much for talking to us today. Pleasure, pleasure, good afternoon. So I wanted to record a series of interviews with real estate porters from around the world who have agents as their stakeholders. On the market's kind of the poster child for that. So I'm really happy you could uh, talk to us today. Um, we recently did a study of real estate portal CEOs. And one interesting thing we found was that only 2% of those we studied had any kind of experience as agents themselves, which to me was a surprise. Mm. Um, you're one of them. How do you think that experience has helped you lead on the market? And do you think that um, other portals in other markets might benefit from having former agents um, in key positions? Well, it's a great question. And to be honest, when I read your article, I read it, I was fascinated by it because um, I didn't know that that stat myself. So, um, yes, I think as a short answer, it's been incredibly valuable. Before I joined the, the business, I wasn't, I said quite openly, I wasn't sure it would be an advantage. I just thought it meant I would have an understanding because I've sat on people's sofas, I've delivered valuations, I've run small, medium and large businesses, I launched and scaled next to the business of my own as well. So I remember that first day, sitting there in the office with no listings, waiting for the phone to ring that very first time. So I've, I've been through that process and I thought it would give me an understanding of my customer base, customer base. but within about a month, I think um, I changed my view and I think it absolutely has been an advantage because I've been there, because I've I've run those businesses. I've worked in sort of all tiers from junior negotiator right through to regional MD. And I think just understanding what agents go through, what their touch points are, what their challenges are and what solutions we can bring has been absolutely vital. And it's been part of what we've done, certainly in the last 18 months in particular, is really engage with agents and, and listen to them and understand what they want and need from us. And being an ex-agent myself, gives me certainly an advantage to have the conversations and to use the language that they use to really understand um, how they run their businesses and how they can maximize their own revenue and profitability. So yeah, I think it's been vital. Okay, you mentioned it there briefly. Um, one thing that On The Market's done, which I've seen and which I think other real estate portals around the world might pay attention to is uh, your town halls, where you personally go out and you speak to as many agents as possible and you ask them what they're problems are and how you can maybe improve the portal how has that been um and i mean obviously you're going to say it's benefited a lot but i mean are there any tangibles from it have you actually changed the portal at all because of it uh yes and yes is the is the answer so yeah i mean it's it's been probably the single most important thing we do and i remember when i was an agent i was a customer of all three of the of, of the major portals and i was quite outspoken in my views at the time and i thought that as the, the portals in general got bigger and bigger, they became somewhat detached from the customers that put them there in the, in the first place. And so it was one of my first things that I said I would do. In fact, I think I pledged it on my very first um, announcement that I gave prior to my appointment. I said that we would do some sort of sessions where we engage with agents and really come up with the concept of town halls then. But um, it started very small with, I think, eight or nine on our first one. Um, there's never any agenda. There's never a presentation. I don't sell any product or service. We just literally open with no script and we open the floor to our agent customers and see what they want and need from us. And it's been so important for me to, to really understand where our customers were in terms of their feeling um, about the, the some positives and obviously some negatives. That's the that's the real value. I can only learn and deliver on things on the basis of the outcomes of what they tell me that they want and need. So I think it's been really beneficial to us. In fact, it's actually now part of our own mission statement. We've got a mission statement that we launched internally um, about six months ago now, and it's three simple words. It's listening, innovating and delivering. And it starts with the listening bit. And that's been the one that's been most important to me in terms of your second question around how, how effective has it been? I mean, many of the products and features that we now have on the site have come as a result of direct feedback from our customers. So like any tech business, you'll have a roadmap of, you know, maybe extending out to a year, 18 months, two years, three years. And we have that roadmap in place. But when we hear from our customers we've engaged with thousands of them now on these town hall sessions and when you hear consistent things come up that they want to need them we will go away and we'll deliver them and actually some things that have 
that have happened on the site, um, some changes to our new and exclusive proposition, which is now called Only With Us, for example, came as a direct result of our agent customers. So I think it's been vital in me understanding as a chief exec, understanding and listening to the customer base and talking their language because I, I was one of them. And then secondly, I think it's been so important in being able to deliver on what they really want and need from us. And by listening to them and then executing what they tell us, it's been very powerful, I think, for us. OK, you mentioned it there, the new and exclusive listings. This is something that on the market is um, done to kind of differentiate itself. Um, firstly, what is it? For those who don't know secondly how do you get your agents to actually sign up and agree to it um and thirdly do you think it's something that other portals can maybe learn from i've actually seen just in the last week or so other portals around the world i don't want to say copy it but do the same thing uh yes it's a good question so um new and exclusive as it used to be called um and is now called only with us and our only with us listings effectively are where agents choose to support us by listing properties 24 hours or more before either right move or zoopla and of course if you think about how valuable that is it's great for consumers because they're getting the choice of those properties first before they go live on the other portals and it's great for us uh, because exclusive content like any business vertical it's exclusive content that draws eyeballs you look at many other industries in other sectors you know uh, the let's take a tv channel they'll never promote their own news or weather because it's the same across all channels but they will absolutely promote their own dramas and their own history documentaries because that is exclusive to them so we've taken that principle and we've made sure that we've delivered it in a very clear and tangible format only with us now sits all over our our site and we're very grateful to the agents that choose to support us and as i said it's it's not contractual they actually choose to do it and to and to help on the market because it makes sure that the right consumers are visiting those serious property seeking consumers um and to answer your your other question about you know should, should others um consider or, or could others do it well yeah i mean you know we we are very lucky we are 60 percent agent owned so the majority of the shareholding in our business is owned by our customers which is a fantastic position to be in that and it's a unique one too i'm sure other businesses could look at it and look at their their own proposition but we found it really valuable in the sense that if perhaps someone is a serious property seek they're actually looking to transact in the next three months or six months like many of our customers say that they they intend to do then this is a very clear deliverable USP for them to attract them to the site. Okay, um, let's talk numbers if you can. What kind of percentage of listings are new and exclusive to on the market and roughly how many are we talking here? Um, it's thousands, uh, so I can say it's thousands. It fluctuates and varies as do market forces, seasonal effects and particularly the macroeconomic situation that we're going through at the moment. So it does fluctuate and change, but it's thousands, um, roughly as a percentage. Um, somewhere between four and seven percent of our overall stock. So it, it's you know it's significant in the sense that if you are a serious property seeker and you want to get an advantage in your property search, then you should visit on the market as part of the suite of of portals that you look at. We're not saying you have to be the only one, but we believe, and certainly from the research that we've got, I've got the latest data here from our last property sentiment index. Seventy percent of our active buyers in the UK were confident that they would purchase a property within the next three months. And that seems to indicate to me, if it's 75% who are confident they'll purchase in three months, that means we're getting a really good portion of those people who are serious about making a move. And I think that really caters to them, to those most serious people. And you'll have seen, you might have seen on the, on the site now, we have a little countdown timer. So when a user visits the site, they search in a particular location, there'll be an only with us listing, which will appear very clearly differentiated as only with us. And there's a countdown timer. So it will say, for example, you've got 23 hours and 20 minutes before this listing goes live with the others. And that's a very specific call to action, like many other business verticals do. But we believe we've got this really good proposition that engages with those serious people. OK, um, enough of the easy questions. Time for some more difficult ones. Why not? Uh, so you've obviously got a very clearly differentiated proposition for your agents, right? But what about for the consumers? Obviously, there is um, there are these exclusive listings. Is that enough? And is there anything else that you guys can really use to differentiate yourself to the end user? Because at the end of the day, without more end users, you'll never take on right move. So I think it's a really good good question. And I would argue maybe we'll come to this. That we're not really here to take on right move. We're here to make sure that we're doing something different and something that consumers want and something that our agents 
find incredibly valuable. And we, we believe we offer incredible value for money as a proposition. The whole differentiation on the site that we've done, and you'll have seen in the, in the past sort of six, seven months when we launched our new website built from the ground up with a completely different new UX and a new UI, that was very much focused on both customer and consumer feedback. We listened to thousands of both parties giving us information about what they really want and what consumers i can only talk about the research that we do i can't talk about in for other companies but for our research what consumers are telling us that they want is a clear and easy and simple to use site and they want more transparency in terms of property information information about a property i don't think any of those two things are a surprise by the way i think that's the way consumer behavior is going but we're really pleased therefore to deliver this new version of our site which we call internally 2.0 which is much clearer which is bolder um, which is easy easy to use we believe now we have one of the easiest to use property search sites it's certainly in the uk if not elsewhere too and we're starting to build in more information which is what consumers want so um, we were leading the way with um, releasing new property detail information that point of use for the consumer on the site we're about to launch in the next week or so um, our latest revision to the site which will have even more more information um, that people who are serious property seekers will like and want to see things that many people give feedback on so we think we're absolutely treading that that line between what our agents want and what expect us to deliver but also what our consumers want and after all as you rightly say Edmund it's consumer traction that's important and we believe certainly from the feedback that we get that consumers do find our site easy to use they find it simple it's not cluttered and it does have the information that they're looking for in ways in which it's easy to find and store that information. So we believe we've got that balance right. OK, I want to pick you up on something you mentioned there. You said your the kind of mission statement isn't to compete with or dethrone right move. That's interesting to me, because as I understood it, at least back in 2015, 2016, when On the Market came around, if not the actual stated aim, but like the, the narrative certainly was, we are going to take on Rightmove, or at the very least, we are going to challenge Rightmove enough so that they lower prices for agents. Um, if we were to kind of play devil's advocate for a minute here, Rightmove, and I'm going to use Rightmove in this, as an example, because obviously they're still putting their prices up. Agents are still struggling to pay it, but the, and their market dominance is still kind of the same as it was back in 2015, arguably. Um, how how then does has On The Market changed its mission? and why i think it's a it's an interesting point so look the original ethos of on the market those principles with with which the founding member agents and the previous executive team launched the business um was really as an insurance policy against the duopoly and the rising du duopoly of the other two and i think we've absolutely achieved that um, I would dread to think where prices from the others would be if we hadn't been around. So I think as an insurance policy, and certainly our agent customers tell us that as well, particularly larger brands, you know, they 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 tell us quite often that they're convinced that having three major portals to offer some differentiation and some challenge um, means that their net total spend is actually less than if there were two. So I firmly believe, and certainly being told that all the time, that the original founding ethos of the business um, was as an in insurance policy to the rising duopoly. I think we've achieved that. But I think we've done much more than that now. I think that what I've always set out to do is, is be different and be memorable and make people see that we are from a customer's perspective, working for agents to help them earn revenue for themselves, to provide products, services, and functionality that helps them do their job quicker, more easily, more cost effectively. And I think we are absolutely delivering that. Will the eventual outcome be we, you know, we become the market leader or we become second or that? Who, who knows? But my main focus, my vision for the business is to become as cost effective and as exceptionally valuable as we can be. And I think we're already delivering that with all of the things that we do in terms of commercial partnerships, in terms of the new products we've launched, in terms of building in additional services as part of the main subscription fee. I already think we're offering exceptional value. And of course, the long term strategy might be once we continue to offer more value and differentiate further, 
that we raise our own presence and maybe one day we do take over the 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 mantle as the market leader however i think that just by focusing solely on we've got to topple this guy or that guy i just don't think that's the right strategy i think the best strategy is to look inwardly at ourselves speak to our customers which is what we're doing on our town halls find out what they really want and need and deliver on those promises so i think that's the the right thing to do it's certainly what our agent customers are telling us that they want and i think that's the right strategy for the medium and long term okay um on the market, it's kind of a unique real estate portal anywhere in the world in that you are, as you say, 60% agent owned, but you're also a publicly traded company. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you reconcile being majority agent owned and also having to deliver year on year uh, revenue increases? Obviously, there's kind of a limit to what you're going to be able to charge people for basic listings packages because you don't want to just keep going, you know, putting the prices up there. Um, and also most kind of agent agent backed portals they don't want to move sideways they don't want to move into the transaction because they don't want to upset the agents how sure. do you reconcile these two interests well we are majority agent owned as you say and we're, we're you know that, that's a fantastic position to be in it is almost a usp maybe not usp globally but certainly within the uk market it absolutely is a usp and therefore that fair and sustainable pricing structure works very well for our agent customers, but in a way it also works for our investors because we have that core value. We are you know, incredibly good value as a, a proposition. Um, we are roughly a sixth of the cost of the market leader. Um, that gives us a position to be able to, to challenge and to make sure that we're continuing to offer that value. But it also gives us another opportunity within the ecosystem. Um, you'll have seen, I'm sure, that I often talk about on investor calls and to my agent customers, this four pillar strategy that we're executing. That's portal software, data and market intelligence and communication and marketing tools. And by exploring all four of those pillars, we can help to build that incredible value for agent customers. But also, as we develop products and services within those four pillars, we can generate revenue from them. So actually, the increased average revenue per advertiser, the ARPA, which is as it's referred to within the industry, that average revenue per advertiser doesn't necessarily need to come from just the core listing service. If indeed, as a business, we've now bolted on a whole other suite of products and services, which we have. And um, for example, in the next four weeks, we'll be relaunching our own CRM, our customer relationship management platform that will go live again in the in the next four weeks. Um, we think that's an incredible opportunity for a portal and a, and a software house to speak and communicate together. Majority agent owned portal, majority agent owned software house. Very, very powerful, and particularly if they're working together seamlessly. So we think there's a number of advantages to having the, this structure. And of course, yes, we will stay committed to fair and sustainable pricing in terms of the listing fee. But the ecosystem is vast. There's many things that happen before, during and after a transaction. And by helping agent customers generate revenue for themselves and by delivering these additional products and services, then we can generate revenue too, which will show our sustained growth in the future. Okay. I have two personal bugbears, and now that I have you on, I'm going to ask you about them. Um, firstly, I've actually just been editing a report that we're going to put out on virtual tours and their prevalence around the world um, via real estate portals. And the UK is, um, well, it's, it's not even on the charts. There's no way to measure it. Um, and also we, we interviewed um, Offer, who's an Irish company who do uh, offer management. They're an mm -hmm. offer management platform who can also embed with portals. I certainly get the feeling that real estate portals are not fully embracing user-friendly technology. Me, as a user of a property portal, I would love to have more virtual tours and a filter for them, and I would love to have offers on the real estate portal right there. What can you say to that? Are you denying that real estate portals aren't quite with the times, or is there a very, very good reason why you're not? I would politely disagree with you. And the reason I would is that's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> the, the reason that I would is because I think that we are heavily focused on making the consumer experience as, as good and as easy to and simple to use as it possibly can be. Um, I welcome virtual tours to, to use that example. In fact, in the next two or three weeks, when we launch the next version of our site, you'll see a virtual environment be very prominent as part of the one of the products that we do. So we absolutely em embrace the, the virtual scenario. I think one of the challenges is, and again, you know, anyone in, in this space will know, there's such a variety of offerings and solutions in every element of PropTech. 
So, you know, there, if you take that example that you've used, the virtual tour scenario, I would love to have a standard where you have this, this standard where every listing gets its own type and format of virtual tour. But as you'll know, there's various different versions, everything from a set of 10 still photographs with some music behind, um, with a sort of Ken Burns sort of filter moving between them. That's one extreme. And then you've got, you know, Giraffe 360 and you've got um, Matterport, those kind of virtual tour scenarios with hotspots. And then at the other end of the, the scale, you've got full walkthroughs with a, with a, with an agent talking you through with some overlays. So there's a big variety in how that virtual tour is delivered. And I think that's why it's not always easy to be consistent because actually one thing that's important for me as the chief exec of a, of a, of a property search business is to try and have the user experience as uniform as possible, as consistent as possible. And therefore, if there's all these different types, you know, sometimes a virtual tour might be called a virtual tour, but it isn't really when you look at other things that are available. And that's why I firmly believe that in the future, there will be some future standardization, but I think there's too many of those, those businesses still looking to find their own little niche and there isn't a single sort of outstanding industry standard so i think that's that's our challenge to try and create and help our agents to support them finding that that standard i want there to be consistency in the way we deliver the user experience and at the moment i don't think that there is that natural one choice for all of the parts of that ecosystem um but we are committed to it and if it helps uh, consumers and if it helps agents then absolutely we would be employing it and we already do allow obviously virtual tours on the site we signpost them very easily you can see that usually on the second image it's very obvious that it's a video or virtual tour because we designate it accordingly so we do embrace them and as that standard continues and more agents support it then perhaps one day it will become a standard on every listing okay fair enough good answer okay last question for me another bugbear um, but this this isn't particularly about the UK or on the market. I find that a lot of real estate porters around the world seem a bit myopic and they're only kind of paying attention to what's happening in their own market, in their own backyard. Are there any real estate porters out there that you follow closely? And if so, kind of what things have you seen? Any other um, kind of products or services that are being offered out there that you think are really interesting? Well, I'm really lucky that we've got a great team and that that team comes from you know, many different parts of both the UK, Europe and the world, and therefore bring with it a level of expertise and understanding of other platforms in and around other countries and maybe even other continents. I don't think I'll mention one in particular, but we are very lucky that our team always looks at pretty much every other of the of the major you know, first, second and third place portals in pretty much every country, but also with other verticals too. I find what I think most is most fascinating about this industry and industries like it in terms of marketplaces is people are really starting to push the boundaries of UX and UI of consumer interaction based on these changing consumer behaviors. And I think there's just as much to learn from outside of the vertical as there is within the vertical. You know, I'm constantly, you know, I spend quite a bit of my time, usually my spare time, actually looking at all different businesses, large and small, from within that marketplaces sector in other countries, in other in other business verticals. And there's little snippets that I see and little nuggets that I find all over the place. And I think that's just what's fascinating about this particular industry is that it's ever changing, it's ever evolving. And I think as any business who wants to continue to grow and to succeed, you absolutely have to have your finger on the pulse of everything that's going on, both with your direct competition, both with other portals in other countries and also with other online marketplaces throughout the world. And we're lucky to be able to, to, to do that and take some cues from those as well, as well as I think as having innovations which sometimes are copied by others which is uh you know it's quite flattering you mentioned one earlier that's being considered so i think we're in a good place with that and we continue to look at all of those platforms in and around other countries and indeed the world well that's a very good answer i've got to say jason um thanks so much for talking to us today really fascinating stuff um and i look forward to seeing how on the market goes pleasure ed thanks very much